Zipper rolls out to the right, pitches off to Taylor, and Taylor's to the 20. Down to the 15, down to 10, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Touchdown, Billy Taylor! Touchdown, Billy Taylor! Billy Taylor scored a touchdown from 21 yards out. The crowd goes berserk. It was November 22nd, 1969 that they came to Barry, Michigan, all dressed in maize and blue. The words were said, the prayers were read, and everybody cried. But when they closed the coffin, there was someone else inside. Oh, they came to Barry, Michigan, but Michigan wasn't dead. And when the game was over, it was someone else instead. Eleven Michigan Wolverines put on the gloves of gray, and as the organ played the victors, they laid Woody Hayes away. Under center is Wangler at the 45. He goes back. He's looking for a receiver. He throws downfield to fire. Welcome to the Michigan Man Podcast on Wolverine Sports Radio, a member of the V Sporto Network and in partnership with SB Nation's Maze and Brew for Wolverine fans from coast to coast. Go Blue and welcome to our Michigan Game Day show for Washington. I'm your host, Mike Fitzpatrick. This week, we leave the friendly confines of the big house for a trip to Seattle. Joining us with his thoughts on that and more will be beat writer Aaron McMahon from M Live. We'll also hear a few cuts from Jed Fish's presser the other day. If you talk to any Michigan fan who's made a road trip to Husky Stadium, they'll tell you how scenic it is and how crazy and loud the crowds are there. It is an incredible environment for any game, but a primetime night game against Michigan will have that place hopping. Obviously, these are not the same two teams that met on January 8th in the national championship game. We know all about our struggles. Washington has 21 new starters and a new coaching staff. Still, they are off to a 3-2 and start and have played even better than their own fans expected. It's our first road test of the year, and if you know what to expect, please let me know. I have no idea what's going to happen in this one. It's the midway point of the season, and now is the time teams usually separate, so buckle up. One of the Washington beat writers asked Jed, what was the biggest challenge in playing this Michigan team? They run the ball extremely well, and they play great defense. So they've kept teams. I was looking, I was watching the USC game before I came up here, and with 12 minutes left in the second quarter, USC had minus three yards, and Michigan had 121 yards, but the score was 7 nothing. That was an interesting one. Uh, you look at the Minnesota game, it was 24-3 to before the game kind of went the other way there for a while. Uh, in the fourth quarter, Minnesota got hot, uh, which was, you know, what you saw. I think that, uh, you know, they certainly run the football exceptionally well. Jed said he's impressed with everything Sharon has accomplished in his time at Michigan. Uh, Sharon's been there six years. Um, that's his run game. Uh, he was the off- offensive line coach. He got there the year after I left. So he was the offensive line coach, then he, or I think the tight end coach, then the O-line coach, then the OC. And uh, during that time, you could see how he built it from outside in. Uh, the tight ends became an elite group. Then the offensive line became an elite group. And then uh, the whole offense last year was very hard to stop. My guest today says Michigan will need more than 86 yards throwing the ball to win games like this or most others the rest of the way. With us next is beat writer Aaron McMahon from M Live. So stay with us.
joining us this week on the show as we get ready for it, the first road trip of the year to Washington is beat writer Aaron McMahon from M Live. Great to have you back once again, Aaron. Good to be back, Mike. We're, we're in full football mode right now. Michigan's getting ready to make their first road trip of the season. And ah, you know, they played their first five games at home. They're one of they're one of two FBS schools. I actually went back and looked. One of two FBS schools to play their first five games inside their home stadium this year. So they, they, you know, they got, I guess, lucky from the scheduling gods, so to speak. But now they get to hit the road and make the 20, 2300 mile trip to the Pacific Northwest. It's going to be interesting. Um, we're five games into the season now, almost at the midway point, Aaron. It will be officially on Saturday. <laughs> I think it's safe to say you are, for the most part, who you are as a team by midseason. I mean, there's always room for improvement. We're a team really with no passing game right now. Mm-hmm. Do you see any way? that can be improved at this point? Well, I think the only way to go is up at this point. It's just a matter of how much they go up. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that's clearly been the Achilles heel for this Michigan offense so far is the, the lack of a passing attack. You know, they, they tried it a little bit with Davis Warren early in the year. Uh, you know, he was rather productive. I mean, he completed nearly two-thirds of his passes. The problem is he was just throwing too many balls in the other team, and Michigan felt like that was eventually going to catch up to them. Um uh, you know they, you know, and 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 eventually cost some games. So, uh, and it and it certainly did a little bit to some extent against USC. So, uh, they they made the change of quarterback. They've certainly gone away from the passing game as we we've, we've all seen. They're, they're throwing at nearly about fifty percent less clip with with Alex Orgy uh, behind center. And look, it was something we kind of expected, right? Like we knew coming into the year, Alex Orgy wasn't exactly the most polished passer. We hadn't throw, seen him throw the ball much at all. In fact, he came in the year throwing with one pass attempt to his, to in his career. So um, it was clear that, that the way Michigan was going to go when they brought in Alex Orgy, right? They were going to go back to the ground and pound style of, uh, you know, attack that, that, you know, had made them successful the last couple of years. Um, that's how they felt like that was going to be their best chance to win football games. So far, it, it's won them a pair of games. You know, they're 2-0 two, two with Alex, Alex Orgy at quarterback. But as you said, the passing game is a concern. It's no doubt the biggest problem right now facing this team. But, yeah, I mean, look, they, they, they can, I think, get it better. I, I think with more reps, more experience, Alex Orgy can only get better. It's just a matter of how good he can get in a short period of time here, right? Like, as I said, he's not the most experienced thrower. He's not the most polished guy. And, and the receivers have to do, do more to get open, and that's been a problem as well. Well, another area of concern to some degree is, is the offensive line, and I don't want to you know, pick on these guys too much. Run blocking has been pretty darn good. Mm-hmm. But, you know, in the last week, last two weeks, even with limited passing attempts from Alex, there has been a lot of pressure getting to him. He's taken hits. He's been chased. It was happening with Warren before him too. Obviously, uh, that has to be cleaned up, but it's concerning at this point, isn't it? Probably again another reason why they're not throwing the ball, you know, as much now. I, I think Cheryl Moore, you know, he, he's a very good offensive line coach. He can recognize when issues prop, pop up, and well, he may not be talking about them publicly, as you pointed out. They have had troubles in, in the pass blocking department. You know, part of it's probably a lack of cohesion. I mean, we, we talked about it coming into the year. This is a group of guys who collectively hadn't played together much at all. You had a couple of new guys. You got a redshirt freshman who, had, who hadn't really played much at all coming into the year at, at, at right tackle and, and, and Evan Link who has struggled mightily on that end of the uh, end of the line um, but yeah it, it's, it's a problem uh, it, it, as you said it was a problem with Davis Warren at quarterback he, was, he faced a lot of pressure and maybe perhaps it contributed to some of those interceptions but uh, you know it, it's another reason I think why Michigan hasn't just thrown the ball much that, that's not an, you know a, a, a strong suit for them at this point throwing the ball catching the ball or blocking for passes uh, and it's, again, another reason why they probably elected to keep it on the ground here uh, largely the, over the last couple of games. Well, I feel for uh, Sharon right now. I mean, he's the man, and with that comes making hard decisions uh, after three incredible years to compare with. When do you think he gets to the point where he says, hey, we're going to ride with Alex no matter what, or hey, we've got to give Davis Warren another shot. Do you think that's going to be on the horizon? That's a good question. And I, I don't know if you're the head coach, if you can necessarily go back at Davis Warren. And, you know, when you when you give the guy a leash of a couple games and you see the turnovers that he, he was committing on a regular basis and you, you make the switch pretty, pretty you know, suddenly, I, know, I, I just, I, I don't know if you could do it. They, they seem committed to Alex for the time being. Uh, there's been no wavering at this point that I've gotten from there, from, from the coaching staff. You know, it, it, I guess if the passing issues continue to, you know, to, to, to build at this level, 
perhaps you look elsewhere. You know, Jack Tuttle hasn't been cleared, so he's theoretically available. And I thought maybe coming into the year, he might have been the best option of the three. But the problem is you just don't know where you're going to get on him on a week-to-week basis and whether he can stay healthy. So I, I think with regards to what Michigan wants to accomplish offensively, Alex seems like the best fit. He can take some pressure off the run game. He can help open some things up. And, look, he's a really smart, capable guy. And you, you've seen – you know, the edict for, for when, he, when you know, he was handed the, the reins of the offense was don't turn the football over, manage the offense, and, and put points on the board. And they've largely done that. And he's only committed one, one turnover, and it was last Saturday, obviously, in that, that interception. But um, the turnovers have been cut down, and, and it's helped Mich- put Michigan in a position to win some of these games. So, you know, as of right now, I just, there's been no indication that Michigan would move off of him. Um, you know, when they did make the change, Sharon was asked, you know, if he could go back, you know, if, if it's possible for him to go back eventually to Davis, if, if the, you know, the situation presents itself. And he said, he, he was adamant. He said, no, we're sticking with Alex, for, you know, for the rest of, you know, for, for time, you know, time being. So um, right now it's, it's Alex's show. I think they're going to keep riding him until maybe the, the wheels fall, fall off, so to speak. But as I said, I mean, there's a lot of room for him to throw in the passing attack. I, you know, I, there hasn't been, I know there hasn't been a lot of evidence to show that he can get better. Um, but I, I do think with more reps, it's it certainly, as I said, there's no, there's no way to go but, but up. Well, I never thought I'd say this because I, I do not yeah. like two quarterback systems. But, you know, given mm-hmm. how different those two guys are, what they bring to the offense, maybe playing them both as an option mm-hmm. if the wheels fall off. I mean, it's not mm-hmm. the option most of us want. It's not what Sharon wants. But I think we're sort of screeching to the point where, uh, you know, the reality is, hey, it might be worth a try. Would that surprise you? No, not at all. It's certainly plausible, right? Like, I think some of us were talking about a potential two-quarterback system coming into the year, right? Mm Because I I think many of us did see that some of the strengths, you know, that Alex and Davis kind of complemented each other in in some regards. But as we, you know, we've heard from quarterbacks and even running backs, and you know, they talk about wanting to get into a groove out there and not necessarily coming out, you know, know, every couple plays because then it becomes difficult to get comfortable uh, back there, so I, I, I think Michigan probably wants to avoid that, you know, at, at all costs. But potentially, could it come up? Certainly, it's, I guess it's, it's certainly a plausibility, plausibility toward the end of the year if, if push comes to shove and they need, you know, whether it's a deep ball, a deep throw, and Michigan needs a, a long drive and, and they want elect to put Davis in there. It's certainly possible. Um, but you know, as of right now, I, I think Alex is the guy um, until, until you know until stated otherwise. Well, after the USC game, I thought, you know, okay, the defense is rounding into what we thought it would be. Started out strong on Saturday again, then let Minnesota put together some long drives in the second half. Should that be a worry, or is the fact that the offense isn't keeping the defense off the field like it has the last three years, is that the real focus or concern? Yeah, it's probably probably a combination of both. I know that's probably the easy way out to answer the question, but you know, we, we've seen this defense certainly turn a corner. They've certainly gotten better. I, I think Luke Martindale's adjusted a little bit when it comes to the schematic things and blitzes and, and everything else. But, you know, if you go back to that game Saturday, you know, it was largely, two, like you said, it was two drives at the end of the game, two long drives that they gave up that, you know, to help bring, get Minnesota back in the game. The third touchdown was, was, ba- was a result of that, the long punt return. So that's really no fault of the defense. So it, it has been funny, though. The last couple of weeks, it seems like the defense has, and Wink Martindale specifically, they've kind of been out schemed in the second half, out adjusted. Uh, teams have, have kind of figured things out, and Michigan's, you know, let up some long time churning, you know, key drives. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and and that's that's the risk you take with, with with you know with the heavy blitz that Wink Martindale likes to do. Now he dialed it back a little bit, uh, you know, a couple weeks ago against USC. But, you know, by and large, he's been blitzing at a 40, 50 percent rate, despite of what, what he wants to tell everybody. So that 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 creates this kind of boom and bust effect like Michigan's seen offensively. Right. You can get to the quarterback, you can get some sacks and, and get some short drives. But you're also you succumb to, to you know big plays. And in the case of Minnesota Saturday, some long some long drives where Minnesota kind of exploited the defense. They're able to get chunk plays and move down the field at, at will. Uh, so it's. You know, I, I, I'm not so much, much concerned. I, I think they're going to continue to play, get, get better. I mean, they've, they've done a good job, I think, really since that week two loss to Texas of adjusting and, and, and realizing, I think, what works. Uh, but nonetheless, don't get me wrong, they're going to still be – they're going, to, they're going to give up some long drives moving forward. That's kind of the nature of how they play. It, it's not what, they, what we're used to, especially the last couple of years under Jesse Minner, that Ben don't break defense. Um, Michigan is just not that this year. They're kind of that get-home defense, or, or they give up some, some long drives and points. Well, this week, as we uh, well know, Michigan travels to Washington going in as underdogs to an unranked team, which is odd in itself. 
And I watched Washington against Rutgers uh, last Friday night. They rolled up over 500 yards total offense. It's an all-new cast of characters out there, vastly different than we saw on January 8th. But the Huskies have been really a balanced, effective team so far, haven't they? Yeah, they've been really good, you know, really productive offensively. Uh, they got a really good quarterback in Will Rogers. He's a 50-year guy, 23 years old, um, doesn't turn the ball over much. Michigan or Washington's committed you know, just two turnovers this entire season. So they take care of the football and they can, they can move down the field. Uh, as you said, they, they can pile up the yards. And they're averaging something like 470 yards a game, so they're very productive. The, their problem, as you, as you pointed out, Saturday against the Rutgers, and it wasn't the you know, the first time that they have trouble scoring points. Uh, you know, they they're 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 converting on third down at only a 38 percent clip. So you know, they're not translating translating some of these drives into points. So that that's been their biggest issue. But no, very good. They got talented receivers. Um, they got a two back system they like to use. Uh, some explosive guys that you know, that, and they're very proficient. You know, Will Rogers played under an air, uh, air raid attack at Mississippi State, so he's familiar. He's he's an experienced guy, and so far, I mean, you look at scratch your head and wonder why they're three and two, but then you kind of dig deep a little bit, and, and you realize some of the inefficiencies and and, and uh, you know uh, their down walls have, have, have you know hurt them. No, oh, absolutely, they have. They've uh, made boneheaded plays in the red red zone the uh, the first five weeks. You, you have to look at it and say, hey, if you can clean that up, it has not been a physical issue or a production issue. It's just making incredibly stupid uh, decisions and plays in the red zone. And you've got that, as you mentioned, a, a a veteran senior quarterback in Will Rogers who's putting up good numbers. He makes good decisions, has some nice receivers. I mean, led by former Wolverine Giles Jackson, has 34 catches. They've got a running back in Jonah Coleman, who's a bruiser. He's run for over 500 yards. So they're going to stress this Michigan defense, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm curious to see how Michigan's defense responds. And, and Michigan's defense you know, hasn't been particularly great in the red zone either. Um, they've given up their share of touchdowns down there. I think 10 of 17 drives from opponents have ended up in the end zone. So I'm curious to see how this Michigan defense uh, holds against this Washington offense, especially if, if Washington's able to move the football and, and get into the red zone, as we were talking about. So that's kind of going to be an area I'm, uh, I'm going to be paying attention to. But going back to Rodgers, I mean, he's completed nearly 75% of his passes, just to give you an idea of how accurate and, 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 and productive he's been. Uh, no no interceptions. Uh, he's thrown for 1,500 yards, 10 touchdowns. So he's been very good. Uh, I, I'm just I'm just curious to see if this Washington offense can kind of finish drive. That's going to be key. Uh, you know, so far teams have done relatively decent job of doing so against Michigan. As we talked about, they've had some long sustaining drives. So, um, you know, the, the Michigan defense is going to have their their hands full. Uh, but by all, all accounts, they're getting going to get back some of their key players. Uh, quarterback Will Johnson's expected back. Edge rusher Josiah Stewart's expected back. Macari Page is by all accounts healthy and ready to go. So they're going to have some of their key guys and. I think they're going to need all hands on deck to try and try and slow Will Rogers and the, and the Husky offense. Uh, yeah. Now, well, even though I don't like this game plan, when I look at you know how do I think Michigan's going to attack this team, I think the only option is uh, hey, it's midseason. You do what you do best, especially your first road game in a hostile environment. You run the football. You use Orgy's legs. Some throw some short range passes, especially to continue to build his confidence. Key: do not turn the ball over. I know that sounds simple, but I think it's what Sharon has to do. How about you? No, that, that's exactly it. That's what was preached to Alex when he was given the keys to the offense, right? Like manage the offense, you don't turn the ball over, and if you got to throw the football away or, or you know, or whatever the case may be, just don't force it. Don't get, don't give up, you know, easy field position, uh, and let the defense work. So that that's exactly it. If Michigan can, you know, put a ground game together and, and have enough. Um, you know, drive enough the drives where they can net some points. They're going to put themselves in a position to, at the end of the game, to, to be in a position to win. And that's ideally what they want to be. You know, when you're when your passing game is struggling, uh, when you can't, you know, maybe convert a third down like you'd want to, um, you're going to need some explosive big plays on the ground. And that's kind of what they've leaned on so far. It's, you know, it, it's amazing when you look at this Michigan offense through, you know, through five games, and particularly the last two and a half with Alex Soldier, a quarterback. It's, it's largely been a, a boomer bust offense. I was digging in the numbers last week. I wrote about it on live.com, but you know, the 27 drives Michigan's had with Alex Orgy at quarterback, nine have ended in, in points, seven in touchdowns, 10 three and outs, and, and non touchdown drives are averaging just four plays and 6.4 yards a drive. So Michigan's basically, they're getting into the end zone or, or going three and out, which is pretty remarkable when you think about it. But you know, they've done enough 
to win these football games. And at this point, that's all they're, they're asking for. That's all they want. Um, to, at the end of the game, come up with more points than the opponent, no matter the spread, no matter what, what's expected of them. Uh, just keep winning football games at, at, you know, in any, any manner they can. And, and right now, so far, they've been able to do it. Well, the other thing is, and I think this is huge, uh, it's the first road game. It's a crazy environment to play in. So for that game plan to work, Michigan really has to play from the lead. I mean, nothing we've seen so far would indicate this team can come back from being down, let's say, one or two scores. Michigan has got to control the tempo in this game, don't they, Aaron? Oh, 100%. I mean, you saw that against Texas, you know, week two. They went down big, and there was, you, you got the feeling right away they weren't equipped to come back, and, and, and they did it. Um, you know, so, like, that's you're absolutely right. They got to get on the scoreboard early, ideally first, and play from ahead. You know, that was a combination that worked in 2021 and 2022. They largely got up on opponents and they were able to, you know, kind of eventually suffocate them into, you know, to the point where Michigan was able to hold out toward the end. And that, that's the case here, set, you know, this this weekend. You know, they have to, similar situations, especially on the road. Um, in, in an environment they, they, they're unfamiliar with, they've never played in Seattle. At least this, this coaching staff and these players haven't. And, uh, you know, I guess a, a new look Washington team. You know, that this this isn't the national championship Husky team we saw in January. They got a lot, of, as you said, a lot of new players, a new head coach, and Jed Fish. But they're still they're still very good. Uh, and this Michigan team clearly isn't what they were last year. So they got their their work cut out for them. Scoring early is going to be key because if you can't, um, you know, we've seen that they they're, they have struggles throwing the football. And if you go down two possessions. That's, that's a long way back for them. Well, for five weeks, we've been saying this week, we're going to learn a lot about this Michigan team. I'm not sure we like what we've learned so far, but we can say it again this week, Aaron, how they respond to being on the road in a hostile environment will be huge and tell us a lot more about them, won't it? Oh, yeah. I mean, every year it seems like there's one road game where it kind of defines the season, right? In 2021, it was the game at Wisconsin where a place they hadn't won in a long time. Uh, you know, last year was a road game at Penn State where they ran the football was it 30 plus times in a row or whatever it was <laughs> to, win, to win the game. I mean, there's always seems like that moment where, you know, you get a feeling that, okay, this team is, is what we think it is. Um, and, you know, look, there's a lot of uneasiness going into this week. I, I know some Michigan fans are concerned about the passing attack. They're concerned of, you know, concerned about later in the year when they have to go against the Oregon's and Ohio State. But, you know, right now, this is a good Washington team. There's no doubt about it. You know, they're, they're close to being ranked. You know, they've got two losses, but they still have one of the better, more proficient offenses in, in the country. So if Michigan can slow them down, I, I think that that's a good sign for the defense. And then if they can, you know, if they can, um, you know, claw out a win, I, I think folks will maybe feel a little better about the offense. But, you know, I, I, look, they, they want to see more from the passing attack. There's no doubt about it. I, I suspect Michigan's going to try a little bit. But as you said, the, 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 you know, the game MO for Saturday is clearly not turn the football over and, and win on the ground. And I think if you can continue to do that, um, I, I think it's going to give some folks some, some hope. I mean, look, Khalil Mullins has been fantastic. He's probably been the unheralded story of, of the Michigan team this year, right? A guy who came in here as number two running back. He's been their, largely their savior. Uh, this year offensively, right? If it wasn't for Khalil, mm-hmm. Michigan would probably be two and three at this point. So uh, he's been very good. They got to lean on him and, and, and get some ground, and gain, some get some uh, gains on the ground and try and turn this thing out. Have some long staying drives, keep the ball out of Washington's hands, uh, and, and you'll be you'll be there in the in the end to win it. Well, final question before we let you get away, Aaron. Um, you've covered Michigan football for a while now. I've been watching them for decades. And I think what worries me uh, even more than the fact that this is a road game, first one of the year, is some of the body language that I'm seeing on the field, especially in the second half. And when you watch it for a long time, you know there's a difference on both sides of the ball, really, especially, as I said, in the second half. This does not seem like a very confident team to me right now. Do you see that, too? Yeah, 100 percent. It's not the team that it was last year. It's certainly not the team from even going back to 2022 or 2021, and look, players will, will, will outright admit that. You know, they've said it multiple times to us. We're not last year's team, uh, you know, for better or for worse. Right? I think they, they realize what they are. You know, they're work in progress. They're a team that's, I think, still trying to figure themselves out. Uh, but, no, the body language is, is, is accurate. It's something we see behind the scenes a little bit more. Um, you know, you know, I have questions about some of the leadership on this team. It's, it's not some of the guys we, we've seen in years past. Um, you know, and, and look, it's, it's, it's a work in progress. There's, there's no doubt about it. They're trying to win uh, as many games as possible. They got to look. They got a young, inexperienced coaching staff, guys that are still trying to, you know, figure themselves out as well. 
and I think fortunately they probably they feel good about themselves being four and one at this point, right? There's 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 a situation, there's a possibility where they're you know there's scenario where they're three and two or two and three at this point. So you know I think they feel good about where they're at, fortunate maybe for where they're at. Uh, but they've got a lot of room for improvement on both sides of the ball, specific, especially offense. Uh, but no, it, look, it's it's not last year's team. That's something they've outwardly admitted. They're they're not nearly as good. They lost a lot of talent last year. Uh, you know, you go down you go down the board on both sides of the ball. A lot of key playmakers, guys that leaned on quite a bit. And, and I thought maybe you think maybe that um, they thought they're going to have more depth defensively than they had you know go than they have going into the year. They look they've leaned on some guys, but I, I don't think the quality of depth has been there like they've been used to in years past and it's made them pay as well so uh, just and going back to my original point it's, it's a work in progress they're, they're trying to get better uh it's not last year's team they, they know that and yeah we're gonna see we're rolling see where, where this thing goes yeah it's where we are one week at a time uh, grind it out and get a w any way you can and even bigger if it's on the road so it's going to be fun to watch uh, how it rolls out with us today has been beat writer Aaron McMahon from M Live. Aaron, always a pleasure to have you on the show and get your insight. So we thank you for your time and look forward to that next visit. You bet, Mike. Thanks for, thanks for having me. On Quick Hits today, the last injury news we heard is that Will Johnson and Josiah Stewart are ready to go. We'll need all hands on deck for this one, no doubt about it. Here are a few game day notes of interest. Michigan leads the series with nine wins against five losses. The first meeting was on September 26, 1953, in Ann Arbor, a 50-0 Michigan win. These two teams last met on a day we will all remember well, January 8th of this year in the national championship game. A 34-13 Michigan win. Jed Fish is in his first year as head coach. His record is 3-2. In four years overall as a head man, his record is 20-22. The Huskies were 14-1 last year and Pac-12 champions. They ended the season after the loss to Michigan, ranked number two in the country. They return zero starters, on either side of the ball. The weatherman says it's going to be a beautiful night for football. Temps in the mid-60s at game time, slipping into the 50s. There is very little chance of rain and the winds will be light. Perfect football weather. So the first road trip of any season can be an adventure. This year will be no exception. When was the last time a team ranked number 10 was an underdog? That is the reality, though. We've seen the first five games, and it's easy to understand why we are not favored. I think this is going to be another game where we just have to grind it out and win any way we can. I hope we're surprised and the passing game starts coming around, but I'm not holding my breath. Run the ball, play defense, maybe force a few turnovers, and gut out a road win. That would be huge. Next week, we can take a breath during the bye, and hopefully we're 5-1 and one at that point. Joining us with his thoughts on Michigan football at the midway point will be Isaiah Hole from the Wolverines Wire. So I hope you'll join us. That will do it for now. Have a great Wolverine weekend, everyone. I'm your host, Mike Fitzpatrick. Think victory, beat Washington. Until we meet again, take care, and as always, go blue. Thanks for joining us today on The Michigan Man here on Wolverine Sports Radio, a member of the V-Sporto Network and in partnership with SB Nation's Maze and Brew. Our listener lines are open 24-7 for your calls at 313-263-4842. That's 313-263-4842. Or email us at themichiganmanpodcast at yahoo.com. That's themichiganmanpodcast at yahoo.com. 
The Michigan Man podcast is produced at the studios of Robin Lynn Productions, Allen Park, Michigan, and is not affiliated with the University of Michigan. Go Blue!